Okay, let's get started. Hi, my name is Bill. If this is the first time dropping into the channel, welcome. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, my next project, um, the Heart Nebula IC1805. Um, while it's true, I still have some additional data collection to do on the M31 Andromeda Galaxy project. Uh, I'm going on a trip for maybe six, seven, eight nights uh, down into Southern California. The time will be split between uh, Goat Mountain Astronomical Research Station in Landers, California, where I've been uh, imaging from. But I'm also attending a uh, seminar over in Borrego Springs, uh, California, a uh, couple hours drive from Landers. And uh, there should be some time at night uh, to get some imaging time in. So <clears throat> while I still have some more work on Andromeda, I think I should be able to finish that up. And then I wanted to know in advance what my te next tar target was going to be. So I've spent some time planning and, uh, and this is the, uh, this is the basic target here. Now there are some things that I am going to do, uh, relative to this target. Up until now, I have been using um, bin one, uh, which I think is really, um, let's see how, how they say it here. I use an ASI-294MM camera, and it basically has two modes. It has, um, it has a, what they call an unlocked bin one, um, with a 12-bit ADC, uh, but the thing I think about is the 2.3 micron pixel size and a resolution of 8288 by 5644 and, um, and a 14K full well capacity. So I've been imaging with that. The camera has a bin 2, and in bin 2, the pixel size goes up, uh, your ADC goes up, so I think that might uh, affect your dynamic range. You might get more stops of dynamic range. Again, I'm a beginner. Be careful when I say something. Uh, I need to dig into, into that some more. Um, it's 11.7 megapixels uh, in uh, bin 2 uh, and a resolution of 4144 by 2822. But the full well uh, capacity goes up to... 66k now i'm not going to attempt to go into full well capacity but i just think of these things as uh buckets that catch uh photons and um you know they're they are of different depths based upon which mode you're in and there's certain benefits uh uh to different uh larger well sizes and that but that's not the purpose of this video here um so i am going to use this uh camera in uh, bin 2 mode. So I need to be mindful of uh, working with Nina. Um, uh, one thing I want to I wanna point out is uh, one way I know I'm in bin 2 because uh, I took some, uh, I had to build a dark library for uh, bin 2 mode and uh, you can clearly see here the file size is a lot smaller. Uh, so it's 11.7 megapixels versus uh, 46.8, I think, uh, for uh, bin one. So uh, that was one way to understand uh, which bin mode I was in. Uh, but um, when I attach to uh, the camera, it uh, to Nina nighttime uh, imaging and astronomy, uh, which is the uh, control software that I use. Um, it sees it in um, uh, this bin one mode uh, of a sensor size of 8288 by 5644 with a uh, pixel size of 2.315 uh, microns. So um, I need to make sure when I am working with a Nina that I am using uh, bin two. And uh, there are several places that I have to be mindful of that. One will be in the uh, sequencing. Now, this was a sequence to do uh, dark frames uh, that I used to build out my uh, calibration library for the uh, uh, bin two uh, mode. 
but you can you can adjust your your binning here. And so as I understand it, bin mode and bin uh, bin one and bin two are handled within the hardware uh, in the camera. So uh, I need to be mindful of that there. Uh, I was already mindful, of, you know, so I was mindful of it when building out my dark library. So making sure that I'm using bin to uh, calibration frames. When I go into my flat wizard, uh, I'll need to make sure that I select uh, bin uh, two by two. Now, one question I have, which will be answered when I'm actually taking the flats at the end of the night, is will changing the bin mode on my camera, changing the pixel size, and uh, you know, is it going to change the times uh, it takes uh, to do a flat frame uh, for a sensor? So, if you saw my last video, uh, you may have seen that I spent some time building a spreadsheet. Um, to see how long it's going to take me, I'm trying to optimize my, uh, you know, my use of the uh, Nina and my Flatmaster 150 to try to get the sm shortest exposure times that are at least a minimum of three seconds of explo uh, of exposure. Uh, so these were basically the times that uh, were generated. All this was in bin one mode. So it'll be interesting to find out when I'm in bin two mode running the flat wizard, creating my flat and my flat darks, uh, are these uh, times going to change per filter? So that's something uh, that I'll learn in the process. Um, so I also then further uh, trying to understand, well, you know, what does it mean as I'm, as I'm changing bin modes? Uh, what does that do to my sampling uh, of the uh, of the night sky in a sense so if you look here at uh, the 2.3 pixel size uh, I get a resolution of 1.32 arc uh, seconds per pixel and you know I put in my telescope if you're not familiar with this is the uh, CCD calculator uh, CCD suitability it's a great little tool you can uh, plug the parameters for your scope and your camera in there and um, so it's telling me in bin one mode with the 2.3 um, micron uh, pixel size uh, that I'm in a good place here uh, relative to the OK seeing. Um, but when I go into bin uh, two mode where my pixel size goes up to 4.63, and uh, the, I, I move up to 2.65 arc seconds per pixel, um, I get this notification that uh, the combination of this pixel size with my telescope and its optics uh, causes me to be undersampled. And what that means, according to them, is when I'm undersampling, it'll reduce the influence of guiding errors but it improves the signal to noise at the expense of the finest detail. So the way I'm interpreting that, when I'm going to go, and I will use bin 2 mode, I'm, I'm going to get less detail, um, but I'm going to get some improvement into the into signal to noise, um, but I'm going to give up a little bit of detail in that trade-off, and I'll have a little bit more leeway when it comes to guiding errors. So right now I think I'm uh, pretty good on guiding, but I've been using 240 seconds, so I'm going to add another minute onto that, and I'll be at 300 seconds. Uh, so we'll see uh, what that results in. So um, just wanted to kind of give you an update of, you know, in a sense where I'm at with the uh, uh, M31 project, um, that I've started up a new project around the uh, Heart Nebula. That's my first uh, narrowband uh, object to image um, that I am changing the mode on my camera and it'll be the first time that I use the bin 2 mode. Um, so that'll be interesting and see what I learn uh, through that process. And then um, if I have even more time yet 
I figure I'm going to be down there, gone about eight nights that I might be able to image. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the weather is going to be, although generally down there it's pretty um, uh, cloudless oftentimes, but you just never know. Uh, so say I collect my data for M31. I have all the data I need there. I've got my data for the uh, heart nebula. Then I will probably um, just move on to the soul nebula. Uh, it's in the same neighborhood. And I could probably use the same amount of uh, data acquisition time of about eight hours spread across the three narrowband filters uh, for that project. And then if I still have some additional time beyond that, I'll uh, I'll figure out what uh, what to do, uh, what the next target uh, would be. All right, so that's about it. I'm excited. We're coming into the uh, the new moon phase. So we should be able to, weather permitting, uh, get some imaging time in without the uh, influence of the moon. Um, I hear a lot of narrowband imagers say they're not as concerned about the moon. Uh, I'm a beginner. I don't know what I should think about that yet. Uh, but I imagine that I will spend some time, you know, imaging when maybe there's uh, less than a full moon and, and, and see what happens. You know, but that'll all be in the future, and I'll share that with you as, uh, as I have those experiences. Okay, so if you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up. As always, like, share, and subscribe. And wherever you may be in the world, I hope you have clear skies. Other than that, thanks for dropping in. Till next time.